Jesus, we thank you for your body. Yes. Broken for us. I want juice back. this bread remembering your body broken smashed crushed destroyed for us yeah really they say that you weren't even recognizable as a man because of the sin coming upon your body we can't even imagine what that's like so we just thank you for what you did suffer. And we eat this bread this morning, receiving what you purchased for us, this right now. Acts 5.16 says you that the, uh, the, the apostles healed all the sick people that came into Jerusalem. So we know that it's your will for us to walk in health. So we're we're receiving divine health, perfection in all of our physical spheres so that we can do the will of God. We know that this corruption will put on incorruption very shortly. So until that time, we're going to receive all those body parts that are in that room in heaven. <laughs> So we thank you for our new teeth. Again this morning. Not yet. They're I still say, not there. I say yes. Thank you. I believe I receive right now. They are mine. They belong to me now. I have them now. So we celebrate. I rejoice in your great love this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Marvelous. And we activate these promises on behalf of our daughter this morning. Father, we ask that you just envelop her physicality right now and bring wholeness mm -hmm. and healing to every cell of her being. Yeah. Thank you, Father. And we take this cup this morning, Father, and we drink all of it, honoring the sacrifice of Jesus, accepting your offer. Thank you. We want to be humble, and we want to be thankful, and we want to be grateful. And we don't want to take anything for granted. We don't want to assume or presume anything, Lord. We want to walk in reality and truth. And so we come in agreement with your word that as you've removed our sins as far as the east is from the west. And that we are in Jesus by faith. And that not of ourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So our boast this morning is in Jesus. <laughs> our boast this morning is in the love of the Father. So we just receive your love this morning. We say yes, yes, yes. And we drink this cup. Thanking you for the blood of Jesus. Thanking you for your love, wherein you loved us. And we're saying no to the devil. And yes to the Father. <laughs> it sounds like a good idea to me.
All right, Acts, chapter 5. Ah, these apostles have started their great adventure. And now they've got the attention of all the bad people. <laughs> now the bad people have, religious people have tried to hurt them imprison them and they'd like to kill them. That's what they'd like to do. But they're scared of the people right now. It hasn't gotten to that point. So, they've imprisoned the whole uh, set of the apostles because they healed everybody that they brought into Jerusalem. That made them mad. And now they've been miraculously delivered from prison and so now the the bad people the Sanhedrin the Sadducees and the priests class are a little sheepish and so they're trying they're speaking sort of softer and they say in verse 28, verse chapter 5, 28, saying, Did we not strictly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. Your doctrine, not God's doctrine. And intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Amen. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom, and here it is again, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. No mincing words here. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince, that's interesting, and a savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Spirit, whom God hath given to them that obey him. So they're still all about works, sure. pretty much. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. So their response to, oh, they were ticked off. to the miracles you is, my let's, feelings, so we're gonna kill you. let's kill you. I don't understand people. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee, named Gamaliel. Gamaliel. And it's Gamaliel. No, it's not. It's, uh, the it emphasis is on the middle syllable. Gamaliel. 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 Gamaliel, a teacher of the law. That says doctor. Held in reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. So <laughs> take the boys out. We're going to talk turkey in private. And said unto them, the Sanhedrin. Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For behold, for before these days rose up Thutis, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered. <laughs> and brought to nothing. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the registration and drew away <coughs> excuse me, many people after him. He also perished and all even as many as obeyed him were dispersed. And now I say unto you Refrain from these men and let them alone, 
For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to nothing. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest perhaps ye be found even to fight against God. Very wise man. How about that? And to him they agreed, Woe! And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. <laughs> and daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Good on you, mate. Well, I always wondered why they went ahead and beat them. It was almost like they thought... No, this guy's... Doggone it. You gotta do something. I'm uh, mad. It's like they were... Spiteful. Yes, spiteful. Yeah. They just... They were... They were moved by Satan. They were moved by the devil. It's, it's like what they thought of Gamaliel whatever they thought what he said made sense but it was just mm -hmm, they were mad they just still had to do something they were filled with <laughs> Satan that's what they were you can be filled with Satan you can be controlled the word the Bible word filled uh, means control yeah. so you can be controlled by Satan uh, Anytime you have unsaved men with unlimited authority and unlimited power, mm -hmm. the devil's going to get hold of them and they're going to they're going to hurt somebody. They're going to kill somebody. They're going to uh, dominate and oppress somebody. They're going to steal. They're going to kill. And they're going to destroy other humans. Yeah. Because that is who the devil is. So you can tell. You can tell who is behind the actions of a person. Do you remember when Jesus uh, passes through Samaria? And the Jews and the Samaritans were racist toward one another. <clears throat> right. And they acted ugly. The term was actually jingoist. I don't know. But they... They would uh, do ugly things to each other. Uh, yes, like the Hatfields and the McCoys. More, it's more like the whites. It's more like it's more like the Chinese and the Japanese, or the Sunnis and the Shiites, yeah. or the Hutus and the the Hutus and the Zulus, or whoever, or whoever. It's. It's class warfare, and they, they've killed and harmed each other for hundreds or thousands of years. The citizens of Jibberty Lot and... The Koreans uh, yeah. and the Chinese. Yeah. The Koreans and the Japanese. They've, they've killed one another for centuries. Thousands of years, at least. So, you can tell. So Jesus and the disciples are, are coming through Samaria, and the, the Samaritans were not impressed with Jesus the way everybody else was. So they kind of snubbed the little disciple, sh the, the disciple train. The Jesus show came into town, it's like and they didn't honor Jesus. They didn't honor the disciples. So. So uh, James and John say, Jesus, do you want us to call the fire down from heaven? They were very loyal to him for well, the most part. I think they were proud to be with him. But 
That's what else. Satan. You can tell what spirit you're of. See, yeah. Jesus says, you don't know what spirit you're of. You think you're this anger and this destruction of men, this killing. You want to kill these Samaritans. That's, you don't know what spirit that is. That's, that's the devil. Yeah. Now, he could have been saying, this long-standing feud that you have with the Samaritans is what's fueling your emotions right now. And if these people were your kin folks, you wouldn't say that's called down fire. But because they're Samaritans, and you've been prejudiced against the Samaritans for 500 years, right. that's why you want to kill them. And that part is what Satan is driving. Or it was the part that you want to kill. See, Satan kills, steals, and destroys. So if, if what you're thinking about doing to someone is kill them, steal from them, or destroy them, right. That's the devil. That ain't God. Right. So, yeah. so these, these evil Sanhedrin people are, are speaking and acting and channeling the devil. That's what they're doing. Yeah, instead of channeling Jesus. They're, they're, they're like mediums, and they're channeling the devil. So... They whip the disciples. It says they beat them. I don't know if that's a specific term, meaning like with rod, with rods, right, rods, or with a, a flagellum, the like cat and nine tails kind of deal, mm -hmm. or if it was just you know the temple guards Fists? just roughed them up, you know, pounded on them a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they roughed them up, they beat them, they whipped them, or they did something to them. I guess we could look that up, see what that word beat means. But regardless, Jesus told the disciples before this, he told them before he died, he said, If you suffer shame, rejoice in my, for my sake. If, if, you, if you suffer for me, re rejoice because your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So this made them really, really happy. Yeah. That here they were suffering shame for the name of Jesus. So that they were, this was a clue. This was a confirmation that they were Jesus kind of guys. If the devil starts trying to beat you up and harm you and destroy and steal from you, does that sound familiar? <laughs> Yes. If the devil does. is trying to steal from you, then that's, that shows that you're a Jesus person. He'll leave you alone if you're not doing anything to hurt him. So, Father, uh, we rejoice this morning that we have been counted worthy to suffer shame, that people have stolen from us. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think I've been beaten. I have. I don't think anybody's hit me. For Jesus. For Jesus. No. Nope. I know I've been cursed and I've been, I've not been yelled at and I've been. Uh, yes, I've been yelled at. Ostracized. I've been threatened. I've been uh, made fun of and. Um, Americans are. Are really of the non-violent sort for the most part uh, especially white Americans I remember this one time son that my, my, my Bible college roommate and I were riding the bus uh, in you know Hollywood Florida back towards the college and we were witnessing to this guy on the bus. He apparently was just being friendly and hitting on us. And when we started talking to him about Jesus, he turned weirdly violent and angry and threatened our lives. He had riders. He had riders. <laughs> he, he had, had riders. <laughs> he did. And it scared us. And we were like almost the last three people on the bus 
and the bus driver, I saw him look in his mirror so he could see back. And he told us to, he said, girls, it, it was the last stop. It was the last stop. And the bus fast. driver that was fast. just told us to stay that on the bus. Awesome. And he, would, he drove us all the way to the school. Come very sweet. <laughs> so. Well, uh, we'll, we'll uh, speak sleep on you. Uh. <laughs> Try some more of that calm stuff. Where'd she go? It can't hurt. Uh, job interview. Yes, sir. Okay. So, Father, we thank you that we have been counted worthy to suffer shame for your name. To who? To suffer shame oh. for your name. And our desire, Lord, is to be so in touch with you, so in the same wavelength, and that our hearts and our minds are locked into your truth and locked into your love that we just, it just oozes out of us everywhere we go. That, that people, when they see us, they see Jesus. They see, your, they see your love. They see your compassion. They see your power. Oh, we want to experience your power, Father, flowing out of us. We want to experience grace, grace, grace. Uh, and we're, uh, daughter of mine, we're recording this. So we're not using uh, names, <laughs> so don't be offended. Because <laughs> I, just in case somebody gets upset, I don't, we, I don't know. I don't think it matters if we use names or not. But your mother says we shouldn't. So. So we try not to. So we mess, we mess up every now and then. <laughs> so Father, our desire is to represent you and to love you and to bless you and encourage you. And then we want to bless and encourage all the people around us, too. So, we thank you, Lord, for the, uh, the beautiful foggy morning. I thank you for Saturdays <laughs> and Sundays. They come in, if you work hard during the week, they're really nice to be able to rest. Uh, well, that will be tomorrow, I guess, because we still have to... <laughs> work on grandmother's house today a little, bit. a little bit so so father we just rejoicing in you while we choose to think on the good things today there's lots of bad stuff we could think about but we're going to think on all the good stuff there's lots of terrible awful things we could rehearse but we're not going to think about any of that <laughs> We're only going to think on the wonderful things. Uh, Philippians 4 says, uh, how's it go? Things that are lovely, uh, things that are of virtue, things that are of praise. Those, there's right, those the worthy things. things, all the things that make us happy, and all the things that magnify God. Those are the things we're going to think of today. So I encourage my son and my daughter to just think on all the lovely things. We get to choose what we think on. The devil can't make us think on anything. We decide what we're going to think on. So we just choose to think about all the lovely things. So I think even the grass is lovely. Mm -hmm. What it's little grass is It's starting to turn green. It's, lo it's such a lovely color. Mm -hmm. It is. So, and, and pretty soon we'll have all these buds all over the place and all the trees will have this beautiful green, light green color. And life will just be bursting forth. And I think, I think uh, we're getting ready to see some spiritual bursting forth. <laughs> that the devil's had his show for 6,000 years. Now it's about time for the God show to pop out <laughs> and he's not going to like it one bit <laughs> but 
that's too bad. So, Father, we, we just trust You today. Uh, we receive every good and perfect gift that You have from us. Uh, Lord, You said that every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights in whom there is no shadow, in whom there is no turning, that You, you do not test any man with evil, that You have only good for us. So, everybody raise your hands. We just receive all the good, all the perfect gifts this morning. We receive them, Father. We don't know what You have in store for us today. All we know is it's something good. You have something good in store for us today. Yeah. Now we know the enemy is going to try to bring something evil. Well, that's, that's a news flash, isn't it? So we just reject all his garbage and say, No, Father, we choose to draw near to you. What, what verse is that? Near to is that God. Galatians? Draw near to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So, Father, we say we're drawing near to you this morning. We're resisting the devil. That means all the negative crap that he tries to throw in our heads. It's all a mind game, is all it is. It's just mind games. So, all the negative junk that he tries to put in our brains. We say no in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And we're going to laugh. We're going to rejoice. We're going to relax today. We're going to sing. We're going to tell jokes and funny stories. We're going we're to rehearse all the good things that you've done for us and for our household. We're going to enjoy all the blessings and all the benefits that you load on us every day. And Father, we say... Give us this day our daily bread. Everything we need today, Father, we receive from Your hand. Whether it's uh, health or healing or uh, houses or lands or manservants or maidservants or silver and gold or uh, Federal Reserve notes or warehouses, storehouses, restaurants, manufacturing facilities. We don't whatever it is, Father, that we need. New vehicles. Uh, whatever we need, Lord, to accomplish your will today, we receive it with great joy and great thanksgiving. Because we don't even know what we need. We we our little brains can think about one thing at a time. <laughs> So we're not smart enough to worry about anything. We can't think two or three things at once. So how can we possibly worry? We can't. We're too stupid. All we can think about is one thing. So we just cast all of our cares onto you, Father. So if we're going to be thinking about one thing today, it ain't going to be something stupid and it's not going to be something ugly, and it's not going to be something from the devil. We're going to, we're going to, <laughs> we're going to take our one little thought that we have. Make it a good one. We're going to, <laughs> that we get this one little thought, and that's all we can think of. We're going to make that one little thought about you, Father, about something good, about something beautiful, something lovely. Sounds like a song. Something gracious. Sounds something like nice. Something We're just going to think about something that comes from you. There's lots. There's lots that come from you. We'll never run out of something to think about. Because it's something from you. You're vast and infinite. So I thank You for that, Father. I thank You for Your grace. I thank You for Your mercy. I thank You for love. I thank You that we have food to eat. We've got lots of food. It's amazing. we got food to eat. Shoot, we've got, we've got our house surrounded by vehicles. They're all over the place. So You have been so good to us. You've been so wonderful to us. 
And of course we don't deserve it. But Jesus does. He deserves it. So we're in Him. <clears throat> so I thank you. I praise you. I magnify you. I take my, <laughs> I take my one little thought and I praise you with it. We, we probably need to go to the Sunday school class. But they're talk, teaching about worry. They know what to do about it. And, and talk about the one little thought. Oh, the one little thought. They could handle that. Maybe. <laughs> so I just thank you, Jesus. I bless you. We're so glad to be your friends. say, kingdom of God come and will of God be done on earth just like it is in heaven. And we say this earth right here is our body. So we say kingdom of God come be done in our body today. We say on this four acres of earth that you've given us uh, to be stewards over, we say kingdom of God come here in the, in the county of Guilford, in the state of North Carolina, in the United States of America, we say, have your way, Father. Kingdom of God come, and will of God be done today in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, we say, we thank you, and we agree with the Apostle Paul that all of Israel will be saved. And we agree with Reinhard Bonnke that America shall be saved. Yeah, America shall be saved. What a great guy. And we agree with the Father that says He wants everybody saved. He wants all men to come into the knowledge of repentance. So Father, uh, we want hell empty and heaven full. Yeah. Absolutely. Let the devil be by himself. That's his business. You and him are going to work that out. I don't have anything to do with that. Well, Father, you said for us to uh, pray that you would send laborers into the harvest. So I'm asking you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you send laborers into the harvest field, that every man, woman, boy, and girl on this planet will hear the gospel and will be saved and delivered and set free from all the oppression of the enemy and all the devil. And I declare it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Is today the day, Jesus? Is today the day you come for us? That the door, that that door opens and we step through it? Is today the day? If it is, we're ready. We want to come with you. We want to go for training. We want to go to heaven. We want to come with you, Jesus. And you prepare us and come back for 40 days of harvest. Hallelujah. Sounds like fun to me. So if today's the day, then so be it. But if not, we're going to praise You. We're going to rejoice. We're going to sing. We're going to laugh. We're going to encourage one another. And so Father, I want, I want to pray for this list again this morning. And that we'll say goodbye to our YouTube friends, anybody who happens to be listening. Uh, we speak blessing over You this morning. We declare in the name of Jesus that You are well and whole that all of your needs are met, that you have full provision, you have food, you have shelter, you have clothes, you have transportation, you have protection. We speak grace, grace, grace to every mountain in your life. Everything that's facing you right now, cast all your care on Jesus. And the grace of God will protect you and will supply all that you need. And you can count on Him. So we encourage you to call on the name of Jesus to cast all of your cares on Him and receive all the good things that He has for you.